Honorable heads of states, heads of uh, government, ministers, the chief executive officer of uh, Mumbadala, your excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Your excellencies, allow me to take this occasion to offer my sincere condolences to the Sultanate of uh, Oman on the sad demise of one of our greatest uh, champions of peace, His Majesty Sultan Gabus bin Syed Al Syed. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, my Omani friends, during this difficult time. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to you all. Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I begin, please allow me to thank His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Syed Al Nain and the Government of uh, United Arab Emirates for its invitation accorded to me and my delegation. Today, I'd like to speak to you about the energy and the urgency of innovation and how in the midst of an existential climate crisis, innovative thinking will prove critical for the survival of our economies and our people. And while this threat may seem particularly pressing for small island nations like Fiji, this crisis of survival is not limited to one nation, not limited to one region or one hemisphere. It is truly a global phenomenon with every country at risk. As I drive through the streets of Abu Dhabi, greeted by the sight of cranes, construction, and some of the world's most awe-inspiring marvels of modern engineering, I cannot imagine a better setting for a discussion focused on innovation than here in the United Arab Emirates. This is a nation that in recent years has become a global symbol of innovation, of technology, and of development. Despite having earned a position of great wealth and prominence from fossil fuel extraction, the UAE's leadership recognizes that economic diversification is key for maintaining its clout in the decades ahead. And with eyes to the future, has worked to achieve one of history's most rapid and impressive transitions. For nations that have been historically oil dependent, economic survival depends on this type of diversity. It takes true visionary leadership to recognize that the status quo, one that has no doubt been enriching, is not sustainable in the long term. Prudent leaders can look into the horizon to see that the world is progressing in a way that will fundamentally reshape how we consume and produce energy. And the responsible path to long-term prosperity lies in transforming our economies to capture new opportunities in energy and beyond. There are few places on earth where this uh, economic evolution has been more evident than the UAE. All around us, we can see a visionary investment in diversification. Billions of US dollars are being pumped into cultivating a Middle Eastern hub of aviation, of finance, of arts, of tourism and culture. And billions more are being invested into some of the world's most ambitious renewable energy projects and research, a move that may seem counterintuitive to a nation with such sizable oil and natural gas reserves. But my friends, true leadership is about clarity of purpose. And that clarity often comes through difficult choices. The easy path would be to maintain the status quo and to leave, and to leave long-term economic stability as a concern for future leaders and generations. It's not always politically popular to invest in things that are untested and hard to see. 
It takes vision and risk-taking to wade into uncharted waters. That's why I have such great respect for the UAE, the host of the Future Sustainability Summit. It takes a particularly brazen brand of leadership to diversify an economy that has done so well on the back of a single export. At our recent uh, international climate negotiations, we have seen nations with much more diverse economies than the UAE dig in their heels when it comes to fossil fuel production. I'm emboldened by a recent global revival in economic nationalism. A few have actually doubled down and rejected proven climate science. Rather than diversifying the economies, they are opening new expenses, new expenses of land to drilling and mining. Whether you are the leader of a company or a country, you need to always be walking forward with one foot in the present and one foot in the future. And we must take these steps while recognizing that some level of sacrifice today may be necessary to avert catastrophe tomorrow. While I have a great deal of respect for the work that the UAE has put into place when it comes to combating climate change, we can all do more. Indeed, we all must do more to ensure our survival. Whether that is through setting more ambitious targets to achieving net zero emissions sooner or railing our regional neighbors to follow our lead in curbing global temperature rise or bringing in new innovative technologies to provide new solutions to creating more sustainable economies, the time to act is now. When we talk about the critical need for innovation to survival, in nations like Fiji, the urgency of this threat is evident at our doorsteps every day. As I speak, ladies and gentlemen, Fiji is threatened by a new tropical disturbance churning in the Pacific, coming just two weeks after being hit by flooding and gale force winds sparked by tropical cyclone Sarai. In 2016, Category 5 tropical cyclone Winston cut short dozens of Fijians' lives and in the span of just hours, wiped out a third of the value of our GDP. The intensifying severity and uh, frequency of these storms is proving devastating to the survival of our economy and our people alike. But it's not just natural disasters that threaten our livelihoods our culture and our people in the Pacific. Coral breaching and ocean acidification risk wiping out the reef systems that puts food on our table and fuels our tourism sector. Increased salt levels in our soil are stripping fields that have sustained farmers' livelihoods for generations. And we are in the process of relocating dozens of seaside villages and critical infrastructure projects that are being inundated by rising sea levels. One thing is clear, no matter where we reside, no one is immune to this crisis. From fires blazing in Australia and Brazil to record flooding in Venice and life-threatening heat waves turning arable land to desert in Africa, disturbing headlines about new climate-induced catastrophes are splashed across the news in every corner of the globe. Here in the Middle East, cities like uh, Madriba in Kuwait and Turbat in uh, Pakistan have already shattered heat records for the Asian continent. And as uh, soaring temperatures and changing weather patterns threaten life-sustaining resources, we will see a surge in disputes to compete for what remains. This is our new climate reality, a reality that has driven Fiji, much like the UAE, to turn to innovation to survive. As a small island developing state of fewer than one million people, we lack the market scale and many of the resources and technologies to go at this alone. That's why we have actively sought out creative solutions uh, to innovate and adapt the Fiji of today to ensure 
that we pave the way to a sustainable future for the sake of our children and grandchildren. From innovative uh, blended financing solutions to innovative international partnerships to innovative new legislation, we are walking the talk when it comes to climate change and we challenge leaders of the world to follow suit. Ladies and gentlemen, human ingenuity has always responded well to pressure, especially in time of, times of crisis. But the climate crisis poses a threat of unprecedented proportion, the full implications of which we struggle to comprehend. The challenges we face call for urgent, game-changing solutions. We must embrace and empower all efforts to innovate change. When I speak of the need for innovation, I don't only mean scientists in white coats, working in laboratories, or engineers in their workshops, churning out new inventions. We must all be innovators. In the area of diplomacy, we must reassess traditional statecraft in favor of more urgent and compelling strategies that summon collective will and spur global action. In international markets, companies must accurately price the cost of carbon-intensive means of doing business. Not only the present cost in dollars and cents, but the future costs trod upon our planet. And we must never fail to underestimate the ingenuity of ordinary people, particularly our youth. When uh, governments set the right rules and incentives in place through smart, carbon-conscious policies, it is ordinary women, men, and children who can prove to be the greatest innovators of all. To really, truly tap to the night of human innovation, government, business, and academia must no longer operate in isolation. No single leader, no single leader company, executive, or scientist alone holds all the answers. It is only when we make space for every voice at the decision-making table that meaningful change is possible. In Fiji, we recognize the need to bring these actors together, and we will soon table an innovative climate change legislation of our own in our parliament that sets out the foundation for this essential collaboration. Many have said that when it comes to combating this crisis, global inaction has been the result of failure, both of willpower and of creativity. In some ways, this is true. Many governments, leaders, and corporations cannot accept the changing economics of a carbon-constrained world. On the other hand, the world's scientists, startups, tech companies, and entrepreneurs are at the peak of their game. So as human innovation makes renewable energy more affordable and accessible by the day, there is no better time to act than the present. The inefficiency of our present con consumption cannot be sustained. We must understand that. We cannot afford to trade short-term gains in exchange for our citizens' long-term habitability, well-being, and the very survival. We cannot take the resilience of our planet for granted, least it crumbled under the weight of humanity's unchecked pattern of excess. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I make events like this Future Sustainability Summit such a priority on my calendar is that I believe the leaders of the world have an obligation not only to press for solutions back home, but to spark dialogue, ruffle feathers, and put the pressure on the international community to act. We are fast approaching the November 2020 implementation deadline of the Paris Agreement. Still, our global emissions targets are widely off track, from limiting global temperature rise to the 1.5 degrees Celsius target, the only target, the only target that guarantees the security of our, of our people. Capping temperature rise at uh, capping temperature rise at 1.5 degrees is less a matter of innovation than it is a question of action. Given many pathways to securing short-term emissions, cuts already exist. Only by overcoming the void of vision and ambition can we take these transformative solutions to scale. 
Here in January 2020, we stand at the beginning of a new decade on the cusp of what some are calling the fourth industrial revolution, while also on the brink of climate catastrophe. And, this, uh, and at this historic uh, turning point, it is clear that the new technological revolution must, above all else, address our outdated economic models, wasteful consumption, and downright dangerous relationship with the environment on which we depend for our survival. Ladies and gentlemen, the role of innovation is crucial to securing a sustainable future. But I want to end on a critical point. We cannot gamble humanity's future on the hope of some lofty world-saving invention. Humanity's decades-long assault on our planet resilience will not be undone with a wave of some magic wand. There will be no silver bullet that wins the climate struggle outright. In fact, we know that there's only one proven strategy to avert climate catastrophe. One, and that is by urgently slashing emissions. Only through such decisive action will we spare our planet from climate, climatic devastation. We already possess tools that can turn the tides of climate change and secure a more sustainable future for the UAE, for future, and for the world. In 2020, we have not a minute to waste. So let us do it all together. Thank you. Shukran.